Hi, welcome back. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, propellers today. and We're going to start with fixed pitch and I'll break the constant speed and governors up into a separate video. Um, a little bit of basic propeller theory. Um, propellers are basically rotating wings, sets of rotating wings. Um, the relative airflow is derived from a combination of the, the rotation of the blades and the movement of the propeller through the air, i.e. the forward airspeed of the airplane. Um, in terms of vectors, it looks something like this. Um, we have the rotational velocity uh, represented by this arrow and we have our forward velocity here and if you draw a diagonal between those we get the relative wind. If you take that relative wind and look at the difference between that and the chord line we get the angle of attack. The rotational velocity varies along the length of the blade because the tip is moving much faster than the root of the blade. And so in order to keep the same angle of attack they have to twist the blade. That's why it's twisted. It's just to compensate for that geometry of the faster component of rotational velocity that there is at the tip. And so if you encounter a uh, written test question that asks about the twisting of the blade, the answer is going to be in order to maintain a constant angle of attack along the length of the blade. There are a number of forces on a propeller, um, and this applies to uh, rotor blades as well, by the way. Uh, there's centrifugal force, uh, which is an imaginary force. Um, it's actually centripetal force. We're pulling on the blade inward um, in order to keep it attached to the hub. Uh, but it's significant. It's on the order even for a, uh, a moderately sized general aviation propeller. It can be on the order of 6,000 pounds. There's torque bending force where the power strokes of the engine are, are pulling the blade along and so it's, it's vibrating uh, fore and aft. Um, there's thrust bending forces um, pulling the, the blades forward um, and also drag forces if you've got the engine idled down to the point where the relative airflow is turning the propeller rather than the engine, um, then, uh, then the blades would be pushed back. There's aerodynamic twisting forces, so, you know, any lifting airfoil is going to tend to twist down, uh, and so, so that happens. And, and then there's also centrifugal twisting forces on it. So uh, the, the, the propeller is under a lot of different forces, so very dynamic forces, and it's actually out there flexing around quite a bit. Uh, from a pilot point of view, this is important to keep in mind, bec uh, mainly during the pre-flight. Um, it's really important that you inspect the blade carefully for any nicks um, because the, these forces will cause a, even a small nick in the propeller uh, to concentrate the stress forces at that point and a crack will result. And you really don't want a tip failure, uh, a, a piece of your propeller breaking off. That's pretty dramatic. When we talk about the blade pitch, we're talking about the distance forward with each revolution that the that the propeller would move if it were if it were perfect if it, if it had perfect efficiency. Um, uh, if you increase the pitch, you decrease the RPM that the the engine will turn because it's it's trying to go farther with each revolution. Um, if, you're, if you're thinking about pitch, there's a couple of metaphors that you can use or men, uh, little uh, uh, mental experiments. Um, if you kind of picture submersing a propeller in a big vat of jello, so that as you turn it, it slices perfectly through the jello. That, the pitch is how far forward it would move in, in that type of substance. Another way to look at it is if you picture a a nut on a uh, on a bolt. How far does the nut move down the bolt with each revolution? That's what the pitch is trying to describe. Um, if we decrease pitch, it makes makes it so we're not trying to go as far with each revolution. That takes less energy, and so the that that 
results in less drag on the propeller and so the engine speeds up so if you have a high pitch you have less rpm low pitch is high rpm uh, and remember that rpm is a really important piece of uh, the power formula uh, so that's one big impact that that we have on powers by by changing that rpm there are a number of types of propeller fixed pitch is the one we'll talk about here in just a couple minutes um, there's not a lot to say about it, but we'll talk about it anyway. Um, the next step up would be ground adjustable. Um, there's some light sport airplanes out there that still have ground adjustable propellers, but uh, uh, you're probably not going to run into one uh, in your career. Um, they're just like they sound. You can actually adjust the pitch of the propeller on the ground by loosening some nuts, and twisting the propeller, and then tightening the nuts up again. There's controllable pitch or variable pitch propellers, and these you actually have a direct control over what the pitch is of the propeller. You're unlikely to encounter one of those. Um, I have flown one, but it's unlikely that you're going to encounter one. Constant speed is, is a very, very common one, um, and it allows the pilot to set an RPM, and then the governor adjusts the pitch as necessary in order to maintain that RPM. And then there's reverse pitch propellers um, that allow you to actually change the pitch of the propeller to the point where you're thrusting, uh, the, you're pushing air forward and thrusting uh, aft. Uh, and then there's feathering propellers that, uh, that allow you to increase the pitch until it aligns with the slipstream uh, so that the engine stops turning. We'll talk about that in the next video. Uh, and then there's tractor and pusher propellers. Those have to be set up uh, differently. So the airplanes that we're flying are all tractor props. Um, there are also pusher props out there. So the two most common ones that, and the ones that you're going to be dealing with for sure during your training and during your tenure as a flight instructor are the fitched pitch and the constant speed. You'll continue to deal with constant speeds if you go into turboprops, um, but for now we'll just uh, uh, focus on the fitch, fixed pitch propeller. Um, fixed pitch propellers have the, the big advantage of being simple, and, and because they're simple, um, it makes it really great for a student pilot to, uh, to learn to fly with. They're relatively light, they're relatively inexpensive, and they're pretty darn rugged. They're a big chunk of metal. There's, they're, they're not even hollow, usually. Of course, there is such a thing as a wooden fixed-pitch propeller, and, and there's, those are still being made, and, and they're, they've got some advantages of their own. Wood is actually a, a very strong material for its weight. Um, but the ones we deal with are metal, and they're, they're fairly rugged. Generally described in terms of diameter and pitch, and so, for instance, the, uh, the 152 has a, a Macaulay 1A103 TCM6958. And it's those last four digits that you're interested in there because what they give you is the diameter of the propeller from tip to tip and the pitch, which is 58 inches. One of the things that is uh, is important and not discussed enough during primary training is the effect of airspeed on a fixed pitch propeller. As airspeed increases, blade angle of attack decreases and RPM increases. Uh, and this has a dramatic effect, um, especially during like a level off. As airspeed decreases, blade angle of attack increases and RPM decreases. So there's a, the, the bottom line here is that you, the forward airspeed of the airplane has a direct effect on the RPM of the engine with a fixed pitch propeller. So here's what the vectors look like. We have a vector here, uh, once again, representing the rotational velocity of the propeller. It's a long one because it's the moving quite fast. Then we have this forward speed of the airplane. Um, and in this case, the airplane's not moving very fast. And so this is our angle of attack right here. As the airspeed, let's say we uh, apply full power now and start rolling down the runway. As our forward speed increases, our angle of attack decreases. 
And that means the with less angle of attack, there's less drag on the propeller, and the engine tart starts turning faster. Now, some of that angle of attack is automatically recovered because as the propeller turns faster, the rotational velocity increases, and we gain some of that angle of attack back, and it sort of self-stabilizes for us. But if, next time you're out flying your fixed-pitch airplane, take note of the fact that you have a little bit more RPM um, just before you lift off than you did as, at the start of the takeoff roll. And that does have an effect on power. Um, you actually pick up a little bit of power as you accelerate. There are different types of fixed pitch propellers too. Um, a lot of general aviation airplanes had uh, options for um, other propellers. And so the Typically, 152s, 172s have kind of a compromised propeller on them, but it is possible to buy a climb prop or a cruise prop. A climb prop has a smaller pitch, which, okay, it's taking a smaller bite, uh, which means that there's less drag on it and, it, and it's and that allows the engine to operate at a higher RPM. Remember our brake horsepower formula, 2 pi times torque times RPM divided by 33,000. So we get more power by letting the propeller turn faster. A cruising prop, on the other hand, has a higher pitch, which means that at a cruise, we can leave the manifold pressure higher at the same RPM, which allows us to produce more torque at the same RPM, which means more power. More power equals a faster cruise. It also, unfortunately, results in a higher fuel consumption. This is a really big misconception. Uh, a lot of pilots think that if you have a cruise prop you save fuel. Not on a per hour basis you don't. Um, you will actually burn more fuel per hour with a cruising prop than you will with a climb prop. Um, and the other thing about cruising props is that you you lose climb performance because it is turning slower during that climb and that means you've lost some power. And so since both the climb prop and the cruise prop have some di disadvantages as well as advantages, most uh, of these airplanes were delivered with a sort of a medium compromised propeller um, that does an adequate job of both climbing and cruising. That's all we're going to say about fixed pitch props at this time. Um, we will talk more about constant speed propellers next time.